and welcome again to Exceed Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about row context. Uh, we're going to talk about row context not only in Docs, but also in Power Query M. We're going to use the, the explanation of the M to bring forward the explanation of the Docs row context. So the easiest way to explain the row context is to simply ask, can you create a ranking by using the same principle as in Excel. So basically that you select this is one and then the, the bottom part is so that you can access the, immediately the upper row in the, in the table and by adding a surplus of one. And this can be done in Excel, but there is no way you can directly do this inside of a Power Pivot or Power BI model. Instead, Power BI or Power Pivot data model is all about data filters. So to be able to do ranking in Power BI, you would need, or in Excel Power Pivot, you would need to filter the same table for each cell or for each row of the table, and then find in that filter how many rows survive the filtering argument of being above or equal to the current row of the iteration. And this sounds really hard to grasp, correct? So we're going to first show you the Power Pivot way, then we're going to show you the Power Query way, which is the way you will understand both of them. So we're going to explain first the Power Pivot way. We're going to select the table and then we're going to do add this table to the data model. And once the data is inside of the model, we can do the ranking, the ranking, ranking column, which equals to variable, so we first have to save the variable of the current row, so the variable of the current current row, which equals to the price, product price. Then we're going to return, we're going to save this value of in this row, and then we're going to do the filter part, so we're going to do the filter of the same table, of the same products table, and then we're going to check how many products or how many prices of the products are above or equal to the current price or the price of the current row. Of course, if we confirm this, we will get an error because in this cell, there will be only one row, but coming from all these other cells, there will be multiple rows of the data that the filter will return, which means that you will get an error stating that you cannot return multiple rows of data as a scholar. So we would need to do some kind of aggregation of this table and we're going to use the count rows. Count rows of the filter function. And then we get this ranking starting from 1 going all the way to the 15. And this is hard to understand. Now we're going to try to explain these products. What does it mean? So these products represents the whole table, the same table in all of these iterations. So each row holds the table filter, holds the same table for each row of the iteration. Now we're going to add the same table to the Power Query. So let's go to data from table range. And then we're going to open the products table. Uh, this is the source. And then we're going to add, let's add an, another step just to get this uh, source step. And we're going to call this step, uh, oh, sorry. We're going to call this step, rename it as a uh, products, products table. Okay. And now we're going to add a column. We're going to add a column. We're going to add a custom column. And for this custom column, we're going to call this rank. And we're going to say that the value of this column equals to the products table, which is the previous step of the same Power Query uh, script. So we're going to call products table and products table. And for each row of this outer table, we receive the same table nested inside as we can see in the bottom part. So for each table, we get the nested table. And this is the same thing that happens once you are inside of Power Pivot. 
we're gonna do close and load just to get back to the power pivot let's go to power pivot let's go to manage so this products table for each row is holding the same thing the power query is holding inside of this table object now in power query if we were to filter this out to so that only so in what does, what does it mean in Power BI, in, in uh, data model, to see whether product price is above or equal to the current row price? It means that we have to iterate through this nested table and check for each row of this nested table whether this price is larger or equal to this price. And if it's larger or equal, then it survives. If it's not, then it goes away. In Power Query, we would uh, use the table dot select rows function over the products table, and then for each of these rows, so in in DAX uh, the iteration happens automatically inside of calculated columns, or in, yeah inside of calculated columns. In uh, Power Query, you have to use each keyword to force the iteration to to, to start. So we're gonna do each, and the condition is gonna be price of this table. So this price, this each price is basically bound to the products table, which is the nested table. And then we want to see whether that this is larger than equal to this 199.99 in this first row. Once we confirm this, we receive only one row. If we were to confirm the, if we were to co uh, compare this for the second row, then this price would be 198.66. And then for the second row of iteration, we'll get two rows that survive, and then we will simply count those rows with Power Query. The same thing happens in DAX, but in Power Query, we have to find a way to somehow access the outer variable. I will show later on how you can do some kind of variable variables or saving the variables as you do in DAX. But in Power Query, you can do it with two ways. The first way is to understand each syntax. So basically, the each syntax is a function invoke with a underscore argument. And this underscore is holding the current row of the iteration. So this underscore is always holding the current row. And then what we, can, what we can do, we can say, okay, change this inner argument from the underscore to any other name. Let's call this uh, the outer price, okay? And then we can use this syntax inside of our nested each. So this is the outer each. Then we have a nested each. And then we can say, so if we do price, this price now is bound to the inner each or to the inner table, which is the table, which is this table. And now this calculation will match true for each row of the nested table because this price is always the same. Basically, we are for each row of this nested table, we are checking whether this price is equals to, equals to this price. But if we define the outer price as a variable uh, that is different than the underscore, then we can combine that or we can bound that variable to the inner each. And now this price is bound to the outer price, which is then bound to this value in this first row of the iteration. If we confirm this now, then we get one row for the first row of iteration. We get two rows for the second row, three rows, four rows, and etc. So this is how we can do it with the bounding or with the explanation of the each syntax. There is another way which is also cool, and that is a way you can. Uh, it allows you to do uh, more uh, the way that is more closer to the DAX way, and that is to use the inner let expression. So we're gonna do okay. The last step is basically to sum uh, to count these uh, rows that survive. So we would use a table dot uh, row count, table dot row count, and we're gonna use the same result of this function to return the ranking starting from 1 to 15. Now we're going to duplicate the same code and we're going to explain the nested 
let exp the nested uh, environment. So we start the same the same way. We're gonna add a custom column. We're gonna call this uh, ranking, and we're gonna add products table products table as an as a variable that is being that that's gonna be iterated for each row of the outer iteration. Again, I made a typo. Products table. Okay. Prod product products table. Okay. So we have the same situation, and now we're gonna do the following. After each, we're gonna introduce a nested let. So we're gonna introduce a new query. So we're gonna do let. And now we're gonna say, okay, we have the outer uh, price in which we're gonna store the price of the outer iteration. So we're gonna store this price. Okay, and then we're gonna do the second, uh, the second variable, which 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 we're gonna call uh, ranking. And in this in this case, we're gonna do table dot select rows, and we're gonna call the products table, the products table, which is this table. And now we're gonna do for each of this nested let, or the, this nested table uh, uh, products table, we're gonna check whether the product price of this inner variable is greater or equal than the outer price because this outer price was saved before we introduced the nested iteration and then of course in power query we have to have uh, in argument and then we're going to return the ranking the ranking uh, variable if we confirm this look at this we get the same result so we are using the nested let to return, okay, we can do it like this, so, so we get the clearer picture of, okay. So we use the nested let to return the, uh, to save the variable of the outer iteration before we introduce the nested iteration with the table dot select select rows over the products table. And the products table is the variable of the step uh, that uh, of the previous step and the last thing we have to do we have to do table table dot row count over the ranking table and we get the same the same feature so in dax we can use variable equals something we have to return that variable in power query we can use nested let which allows us the similar syntax of using the uh, variable called outer price in which we store the price of the outer rows of iteration and then in the following step we can use another nested iteration in which we can uh, which, uh, which we, in which we can compare the price of that inner table as compared to the outer price the variables behave the same way they are being evaluated in the place they have been defined not in the place they have been used therefore these both syntaxes will return the same thing, which is the ranking of the table inside of Power Query. And hopefully, this will give you a more clearer view of row context in DAX and in Power Query, and also explain you what does the nested filter means. So basically, each nested filter is holding the same table as you can see it in the outer expression or outer environment. And this is pretty powerful once you get familiar with this. So hopefully you like this video. If you have any comments, please post them in the section below. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.